the university spent an awful lot of money on that, so I tend to try and show it at the start of each presentation. Uh, as has already been said, uh, my name is Charlie McCartney. I'm from the School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at Queen's University in Belfast. The title of this brief, and I'll try and make it brief, presentation is an evaluation, sorry, an evaluation of active learning strategies applied to engineering mathematics. So, I've put this with an explanation mark on purpose uh, for the simple reason that teaching maths to engineers is a worldwide problem. There are hundreds, maybe even thousands of papers uh, from Sweden, Russia, down to New Zealand, from Canada, down to Chile. And I've tried to read quite a lot of them over the last few years because we have a specific issue when it comes to teaching maths. It deals, the papers deal with all sorts of issues. Entrance standard is a big one for us, and I'm sure anybody here involved in teaching maths are probably experiencing similar things there. Motivation of the students, engineering students, we find typically don't want to be doing subjects such as maths. The way you teach the maths, what way you go about it, is it in context? Can you use things like active learning to try and help the whole scenario? The content of the maths, getting it right for specific classes is very important in a lot of these papers. An assessment strategy that does align with the relevant learning outcomes, again, is, is highlighted in many papers. And one of the things of recent years uh, which is published a lot, are the resources available, and there are an absolute phenomenal amount of excellent resources available from all around the world, which are there for anybody to use, free in most cases, so I, I would recommend you try and, you know, if you're having issues, to, to do that very thing. All of these issues have to really be addressed if you're going to have success in teaching maths to engineers. That's what we found over the last five years. Now, this paper, I'm specifically only going to deal with uh, a new module that we've developed for second year engineering students. It's actually as part of a product design and development course. And basically go through some of the issues we have had specifically to address the engaging of students. What we're trying to do here was almost a, a bit of an experiment to do anything we could to engage the students. What we found again is the good students will get through most of these uh, science type courses. It's the middle of the road and the bottom end students that really struggle with motivation and with engagement. And that's what we've been trying to do over the last few years in this course. So the summary, summary of the presentation is, I'll give you a brief introduction, a bit of a background to our university and explain the existing first year maths provisions that we have. I'll then look at this new second year module that we've developed over the last few years. I'll explain the rationale the objectives and give you a bit of an insight into some of the content or as much as I can in the time and then uh, we'll look at the, effic the efficacy of the whole thing. Did it work? Were the students engaged? And hopefully I'll be able to show you some assessment results and some feedback from the students in relation to what we did. And I'll finish off with some conclusions. So background, I'm from the School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at Queen's University with three specific degree programmes. Aerospace and mechanical and manufacturing have been around for many, many years, but in about 2004, 2005, we developed a brand new product design and development course. I don't know if anybody remembers Ed talk yesterday, but we were actually the first university outside of the original Swedish universities and MIT to get involved with CDIO. We're still part way through the plan to totally implement CDIO, especially in those older programs, the BEng and MEng of the mechanical and the aerospace. But with the new product design uh, and development program, what we were able to do was, from scratch, apply the CDIO paradigm into designing, implementing, and then effectively operating this course. The big, or the key thing that differentiates the product design development course from the other two uh, courses is that we now enroll students with no formal qualification, secondary, uh, A-level qualification in maths, so we've had to really look in-depth at how to approach that over the last few years. Originally, we just had one mathematics module for the product designers, and it was in first year. And this was really the only formal tuition that they were getting. So to look at that in a bit more detail, it was the only module for the product designers. Uh, it had to prepare them for the whole program. There are other science subjects within the program, so therefore it had to bring them up to speed so that they could tackle those or attend those successfully. It was originally scheduled in the first semester of the first year, but we've now lengthened that out over both semesters to make the impact a bit less for the students. And it was of paramount importance to their success. So again, in order to get through and, and graduate, 
this module was key. Now it's now been running for five years and we've learned an awful lot evaluating active learning and assessment strategies and that really put us in, in, in good shape uh, to move on from there. How do we go about preparing this course uh, as more background? Well, we did just apply a full CDL strategy. Being mechanical engineers, we're very systematic about this. Uh, what we really wanted to emphasise was that the module could integrate with the rest of the course and espouse the same learning strategies as the other more design oriented courses that the students were doing because again they're the, the, the courses that got the best evaluation and the, and, and the best feedback from the students. We had to continually uh, uh, enforce the relevance of maths to product design because again those students coming in without a formal qualification in maths you know did tend to did not see the relevance, they'd, they'd never experienced it at school so we had to make sure that we could do that and all of this was to try and keep them motivated and engaged with the subject. We didn't do anything new we didn't recreate the wheel. What we did do is make sure we were most informed of what the best practice was, and then we just tried to put that into play based on the limited resources uh, that we had. So the best pedagogy basically pointed towards, in relation to content, interview all your staff on the programme, find out exactly what maths is required for their topics from first year right up to the final year. Uh, in accordance with the UK Higher Education Academy, they recommend a diagnostic test for the students the first day they get into the, into the programme. We did that. We weren't appreciated for doing it the first day at university for these students. I was given the maths test at 9am on a Monday morning. Uh, I was Mr Popular. Uh, but that did give us a really good feel for the student abilities and we did look into their, their learning styles as well. It also helped us pace the whole course. Uh, that led into the learning and teaching. And what the papers really said was you must be doing active and collaborative type activities in the maths class if, if you want to engage these students with the lesser skills coming in. The assessment we spent an awful lot of time on and actually finished off with that format, class test, homeworks, examination, actually 50-50 marks for the class tests and homeworks and again the 50 for the exam. And that was over several years of evaluation to get that right, to try and promote through a, a good assessment strategy the students to, to actually engage with the learning more. Now it all, all sounds fairly good. Uh, these were the things we found out about assessment. There are so many papers on it from people like Rust and Gibbs. This last one is one that we really you know, see a lot. You know, no matter how much effort you put into the teaching, uh, essentially the first thing the students do is look on the page in the, in the handbook, what's the assessment of this? What am I going to have to do and when? Okay, so again, we're trying to get them out of that. It does sound like everything is in good order, and it was for the first years, but we did find out that more was needed. How did we find out more was needed? Well, in that first year class, the rationale that led us to this was the active learning sessions in first year give you an instant feel of how the students are doing, what they're engaging with in the class. So every class for 24 weeks, as a, as a lecturer of that class, I got a very good feel for who was getting it and who wasn't. The homework tutorial sheets with a lot of records of exactly which topics are causing issue with the students and which uh, the majority are getting. The examination of course with a lot of data again split down into the topics so we'll have all the graphs of what's working and what isn't. And then what we decided to do based on information coming back from some of the other uh, engineering science subjects was give them a diagnostic test further down the line after they'd actually finished the first year maths module. That diagnostic test confirmed or verified that we still did have an issue. Now, all of the students were passing the first year module. They weren't achieving all the learning outcomes, but they were achieving a pass level. But these specific areas of trigonometry and calculus, which aren't taught in the schools at, at the, the middle level of secondary school, you know, were causing the most difficulty. And again, the usual things with differentiation, uh, integration, etc., it was almost a, a, a four letter word to a lot of the students. So, we did have some clear objectives then and how to move forward for, for the second year course. Uh, provide more practice in the methods presented in the first year course because practice means everything, uh, I believe, when, when trying to teach maths. Promote a deeper learning environment and not just one where they come in and do just enough to get by and pass. Emphasize the relevance again, uh, another opportunity to do that. And also potentially uh, uh, have the opportunity to uh, involve the students or let the students uh, improve some of these other softer skills, so to speak, the personal, interpersonal and professional skills. But again, we weren't going to try and recreate the wheel, we we're just going to try and see what worked at other universities. 
as a side note, that's something that the CDO has really helped us with uh, at the at the regular meetings we have w with our with our specific area groups in the UK and Ireland. We get to see what's working at all the other universities at this conference every year. Again, uh, as you've already seen today, there's a lot going on. Read the teaching of maths uh, at all the universities. So again, we can see what's working and what isn't, and just a plot. This is what we came up with. Assessments basically running the show. Uh, on each side, we had continuous or uh, computer assisted assessment exercises and analytical design assignments. But really the assessment was going to be the, f the full drive or the motivation to learn. The computer assisted assessment is all done through this Helm software, which is free to any university in the UK. There was a lot of government money pumped in the funding this Helm research several years ago, or early 2000s. It finished in 2005, and there's a tremendous resource uh, available. What it really consists of uh, at present is four topics, four class tests, immediate feedback uh, in all the work to do. Uh, the lectures aren't the old traditional style. They're very much mini lectures, lots of active and interactive learning, tutorial classes, group discussions. We are lucky with, with the product designers because we have uh, a lot less students than we have in the mechanical and the aerospace combined. So we, we can get more hands-on with the students in that regard. The design assignments we figured Excel was something that was pretty common to all the students. You'll see later that maybe you know, we weren't 100% in, in that decision. But we managed to get together relevant assignments and, and relevant design problems. There was continual feedback because they were practicing this in class every week. It certainly was hoped that it would promote deeper learning. And it also gave us the opportunity to develop some of these personal, interpersonal, and professional skills along the way. One thing I would point out that you did need you know, good learning spaces for this with computers or laptops available in, in the classrooms. Did it work? What I'm going to do is show you some of the information or data that we've gathered, the, the qualitative and the quantitative in relation to the assessment results and the student feedback. Summative results, attendance was excellent at this class. Over the three years that we've, we've evaluated it now, you know, it was 81, 73 and 93 percent. The overall module score was a credible in around the mid to late 50s. Class test, that element of it wasn't so good. There was still you know, an, around an average of 30% failing it. The assignments, nobody ever failed. They really did seem to go for the assignments, engage with the assignments. What we also decided to do, just to verify you know, what we were seeing uh, with this data, was this year what we did was to give them a diagnostic test right at the start of the module in second year without them knowing about it, and then right at the end, the exact same test, just to see, did they actually learn anything? And you can see in general, all of them did. And what was particularly encouraging was the students, blue is before, green's after, I should say. The students who were struggling the most actually made the best gains. So again, that helped validate uh, for us what we were doing. Formative data, again, we give out all sorts of questionnaires, like Kurt scales to the students, let them rate things. The key things that they were going to rate were module contents, teaching contents, assessment methods, feedback, which is a really big one in the UK at the minute uh, due to the, the student survey, and lectures contributions to their learning. What came out of that was excellent for us. Uh, in general, we were getting ratings of above 90% for everything. In that. Now, it did take a lot of effort this class, and it certainly paid back. We asked them to make some comments as well, some written comments about what they thought, what the most satisfying aspects of this approach were. Comments like this in relation to the lecture. There's been several lectures in this course, and all of them certainly seem to motivate the students. They love this software. Now, we do give this software to them in first year. Now. In fact, it's on the university VLE, so they can access it from anywhere in the world. So the Helm software was went down really well with them. They liked the whole structure of this course because it was totally different from all the other science courses they were doing. They actually got a buzz out of completing those assignment tasks because what they were being tasked to do was create almost a, a standalone design tool, a little CAE tool, which they could use for, for design problems, and they really got into that. They liked the continuous feedback, which was in every class as they went along. The whole different style of learning worked really well from, for them, especially not having everything weighted towards an exam at the end of it. They were able to use Helm and a lot of the other courses because it's such a big resource. And they really did appreciate seeing how to actually apply uh, mathematics to design problems. Love the feedback. We were giving them out this in those days at the beginning. 
liked the continual assessment aspect of it because it let them see exactly how they were getting on. Also then asked them, you know, what didn't work for them. Again, we assume they were all coming in. We, all of our students coming into university have done a lot of the, the whole Microsoft Office thing at school. Most of them are actually, when you see their, their, their CVs, are, are Microsoft accredited and all these things, hence the reason for picking Excel early on. We found that that wasn't the case, and we have attended to that uh, this year, and we'll give them a separate uh, class as part of the introductory course for the students in Excel. They did like, uh, well, again, differentiation and integration was still causing them problems, but that, that's something we're continually work on. 10 a.m. start didn't appeal to many of them, but there was nothing we could really do with that because the timetabling is out of our control. Too early. <laughs> <laughs> you would get on well at our place. Um, conclusions are, it did seem to engage the students. Okay, the, it, it certainly, from the feedback and the, the attainment results we, we, we obtained, that was beyond doubt. Uh, there was very uh, positive feedback for, for the computer-assisted learning and the computer, sorry, computer-aided learning and computer-assisted assessment, which is all part of the Helm uh, package. And we felt that it, the students did get much more involved in the learning process in this type of class and, 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 and did seem to engage with it very well. Again, some obvious conclusions here in relation to their understanding. Certainly was, in, in this brief three-year evaluation, improved by using some of these techniques. They like the flexible learning, because again, they had all this information, all this stuff available to them anytime, anywhere. And again, that helped them engage and it actually helped them probably work harder, work more than they normally would have done. Uh, the constant feedback thing, again, was, was very important to students. Uh, it's also very important to us, because again, we can see immediately and react quickly uh, to what's happening in such a class. And it did provide for Everyone involved, a very enjoyable and constructive learning environment. I got to know the students really well, you know, got to know exactly you know, who was having issues, who wasn't. So it, it, it seemed to work well for us.